We've looked at a lot of different types of molecular substances. We've taken a look at ionic structures that have charges built together through the transfer of electrons, and that causes them to stick together, creating the properties that they have. We saw covalent compounds that share electrons and then have different properties because of that type of bonding. We saw metals and alloys that are held together by metallic bonding that allow them to have unique properties such as electrical conductivity and uh, thermal conductivity. However, there's another category of molecules that we need to understand, which are actually a class of covalent compounds, but their properties are so different and so unique that we actually talk about them totally separately and on their own. This other category of molecules are called polymers. You see, a polymer is just a very large molecule that is made out of repeating pieces that we call monomers. We've actually seen a polymer before when we studied DNA and we were studying biology. You see, DNA is a polymer and it's built out of repeating pieces that are called nucleotides. Those nucleotides connected together over and over and over again to make a long chain. We talked about how you can kind of visualize a chain as a polymer. You see, you have one individual link in that chain, which would be like the monomer. But a chain is not just a monomer, it is a collection of them connected together. And a polymer is not just a single monomer, it is sometimes millions upon billions of, mol of monomers all connected in a larger structure. So this entire thing would be our polymer. Polymers are incredibly diverse. They are found in the natural world. They are found in synthetic substances that are man-made. And no matter if we're talking about naturally occurring biological polymers or man-made synthetic polymers, they all have incredibly unique sets of properties. Now, there is no way to pin down the exact properties of a polymer because of how diverse they are. You see, what really defines the way a polymer is going to work is based on what monomers it has and how those monomers interact with each other and with other things. So we already took a look at an example of DNA, but we've actually seen another example of polymer that kind of illustrates this, this principle quite well. That's a protein. You see, remember a protein is made out of the monomer of an amino acid. And if you think about what proteins do, they build up parts of your skin, they build up things called elastin in your, in your body that are stretchy, they build up collagen, which is strong, they build up molecules that cause chemical reactions that we call enzymes, they go through all sorts of different things. They build my fingernails, my hair, they build uh, a lot of the traits that we end up seeing within our individual cells and with our, within our bodies, and that's because of how diverse proteins are. Now, proteins are just one example of a polymer. To give you some other examples of polymers, we could be talking about things like polyethylene. This is what you would commonly think of as plastic. It's a really common plastic that is just built out of this monomer called ethylene that connects together over and over and over again to build up larger structures that we use for all sorts of different purposes. And if you think about polyethylene, it can actually be found in different types. There is polyethylene that makes up plastic shopping bags. There's polyethylene that makes up uh, drinking containers. There's polyethylene that is actually hard and not very flexible, so making up things like food storage containers or all sorts of different substances. And this is because we can actually change the density, which changes the properties, and so we have all sorts of ranges of different properties. To give you another example of a synthetic polymer, you could be talking about something like polystyrene, which you probably know better as styrofoam. And again, it has incredibly different properties from other polymers. So polymers tend to have a few properties that are similar.
they tend to have quite high melting and boiling points due to the large structures and their ability to get tangled. They tend to be solids because of how large they are and how much they interact and because of those high melting points. They tend to be somewhat flexible to a certain point, um, at which point they are no longer actually able to, to bend and will actually shatter. Um, and you can do different things to polymers to actually change their properties. I think one of the best ways to visualize a polymer is to visualize each polymer as a long strand. And if you were to zoom in on a structure, those long strands tend to actually fit together. And some of them will fit nicely together, some of them will crisscross, and you will actually get really large structures that often build up net-like materials, especially when we're looking at things like plastics. Now, what ends up happening is these will have a certain amount of flexibility where these strands can actually bend and move a little bit past each other, causing them to actually be able to do this. But at a certain temperature, you may have noticed certain plastics actually stop doing this. All polymers have what is called a glass transition temperature, which is when that polymer stops acting flexible and bendable and starts acting more like glass. You see, if you've ever taken a pop bottle out in the winter and you let it get really, really cold and tried to bend it, you may notice that it completely shatters. It may be very, very hard when you grab it initially, and that's because it is now at its glass transition temperature. All polymers have this property, and it's one of the few things in terms of their properties that they have in common. The other thing that most polymers have in common is the ability to go through what is called cross-linking. When you have a large structure of polymers, you can sometimes add materials to them that actually connect different strands of that polymer together. When you end up connecting different strands of that polymer together, it reduces its flexibility, it increases its strength, and it causes that structure to actually be held together more tightly. A really good example of this would be rubber. Rubber actually is naturally occurring from rubber trees, and we can use the material that we collect from there to make all sorts of different substances. Natural rubber is actually really, really flexible. But if you think about the rubber that's used in tires, whether it be for a car or for a bicycle, it has a lot less flexibility than other types of plastics. And majorly, this is because it has been cross-linked. So we add a substance to it that actually connects strands of rubber together and makes it much, much more uh, hard and much less flexible and that allows us to change the properties of that polymer. Polymers are really complex, really diverse, and because of that diversity, their properties are also diverse. We can't really pin down one thing that all uh, polymers have in common, except for the fact of their structure. All polymers are built of monomers. They are built of repeating pieces connecting over and over and over again. So this is a look at what polymers actually are, and hopefully this helps you get a better understanding of them. And so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.